Hey, could you go to the next one? So as we prepare to meditate on the Word of God this morning, let us pray. Lord Jesus, many of us are weary and burdened. Thank you for your wonderful invitation that we can come to you and find our rest. Jesus, please empower my words by your Holy Spirit. Give each of us a hunger and a real desire to find rest for our souls in you. I pray in your name. Amen. So, this is the beginning of a sermon series called Find Rest for Your Soul. The stunning and wonderful invitation of Jesus is that those who are weary and burdened can come to him. That those who have a heavy laden soul can actually come to Jesus and find their rest in him. Barry, could you just click to the next slide? Thank you. Now, first of all, uh, and the next one, thanks, Barry. First of all, I want to acknowledge that much of the material uh, from my book, uh, from my sermon series, is from catalyzed by a book called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. It's got a subtitle that says, Staying Emotionally Healthy and Spiritually Alive in Our Current Chaos, and it's by John Mark Comer. I think that we really need to, uh, I, I can't recommend this book highly enough, but a lot of the, the ideas for this sermon series have come from this book. If you want a great read, if you want a book that could potentially change your life, I encourage you to get a copy of The Ruthless Elimination of hurry. I've said it before and I'll say it again before this pandemic is over. This is the first time this century that busy has not been the defining adjective of our lives. Before the start of 2020, if I asked anyone how they were, I guarantee that within two sentences they would say busy. Our lives are rushed, our lives are hurried, our lives are often burdened, weighed down by many, many things. And hurry, busyness, the relentless pace and productivity of life is one of the things that really burdens us. And so we are going to go on a journey with Jesus and we are going to find rest for our soul. I love one of the quotes that is right at the start of this book by John Mark Comer. He's talking about uh, two uh, men, two pastors that he really respects. And one of them was a mentor to the other. And the, and, um, the first one rang his mentor and the conversation went something like this. How can I be more the me that I really want to be? And there was a long pause because apparently the other man whose name is Dallas Willard and the first man is John Ortberg. Dallas Willard always gives a long pause before answering a question. There was a long pause and then Dallas Willard said, you must ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. And so John Ortberg said, that's great. And he wrote it down. He wrote the note, you must ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. And he said, what else? And there was a long pause. And Dallas Willard said, there is nothing else. Hurry is the great enemy of the spiritual life. You must ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. Hurry and busyness are often the things most likely 
to kill or to at least severely injure our spiritual life, our life with God. We are weary and burdened. And so we're going to go, as I said, on a journey with Jesus to eliminate hurry, to find rest for our souls. Now, in case you think that I'm kind of some, some kind of spiritual guru and that I've got this stuff all down and it's all perfect, Barry, if you could go to the next screen and then briefly uh, share the screen, please. Uh, some of you may have uh, seen uh, on Facebook, on our church's Facebook page, that sometimes I do a breath prayer, which is a spiritual practice uh, where we breathe the words of Scripture. And if you look at my breath prayers, you will see that they are set in this setting, this beautiful, peaceful scene with a lovely uh, labyrinth artwork by my wife on the wall and this lovely, comfy chair. Now, that's the public face of some of my spirituality. But Barry, if you go to the next slide, this is the context in which I do my breath prayer. Maybe your room is as messy as this. Maybe the chaos in your life is not only confined to the stuff that finds its place on the floor or the chair or the desk or the cupboard, but also to all of the clutter that gets into our time and our actions as well. So. In short, I'm with you on this journey. I'm not some kind of guru. My spiritual life is not the lovely comfy chair with the lovely painting in the background. It's in the midst of everyday busyness, chaos, uh, clutter, disorder, and hurry. Okay, Barry, you can stop sharing there and go to the next slide, though. Now, let me read for you again the invitation of Jesus in verse 28 of Matthew 11. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. I just want to dwell for a moment on those three words in this teaching of Jesus. Burden, weary, and yoke. A burden is something that weighs you down. The word is originally from what is loaded on a ship. And you can imagine that as things are put on the ship, the ship gets lower and lower and lower in the water. Well, burdens that are put on us make us get lower and lower and more hunched and more oppressed in our humanity. Jesus has come to bring liberation from burdens of all kinds. He's come to lift those loads that bow us down and that diminish us as people. The word weary is from a word that means to be beaten up. If you ever feel like you're beaten up by life, the, the weariness that is caused by the constant things that keep on pummeling us all the time, then this word is for you. It's also about the exertion of manual labor that brings tiredness. You know, maybe Gary, when you've worked like really hard all day in the garden and you just, Gary's laughing at me, and you just, you have this kind of heaviness in your body. You don't have much energy left. That's, that's what weariness is like. And finally, this word yoke, it's really a word that we don't understand very well. Um, Barry, could you share and go to the next slide, please? And share the screen. What we have here is 
on your screen about now is two oxen and the wooden beam between them and the equipment that holds it together is the yoke. This is a really strange symbol for Jesus to say, I will give you rest if you take my yoke upon you. Because a yoke is an implement of work. Also though, a yoke was a common idiom in the first century for a rabbi's way of teaching and reading the word of God. It was a, a teacher's set of teachings on how to be human. How to shoulder the load that life inevitably puts on us. So Barry, if you could just stop the share there, please. So Jesus' invitation here is to take up his yoke. But what does that mean? It means that we are connected together with Jesus. And we are walking with him along the road of life. And it's actually Jesus then who bears the great weight of the burdens that bow us down. But here's the thing. Oxen don't walk very fast. They actually go really slow and steady. And so if you are bearing the yoke of Jesus, if you take up his invitation, to find rest. You can't pull ahead of him. You can't be behind him. You can only go at walking pace with Jesus. Unhurried, patient, steady. We will get there. To walk with Jesus which is the, th the theme, the tagline of our church, walking with the risen Jesus, is to walk at a slow, unhurried pace. And so hurry is the death of our prayer life because it means that we're walking ahead of Jesus. Anxiety can be deadly to our prayer life because it means we're pulling back and not walking with Jesus. Jesus' invitation to us is to take up his yoke, to travel through life at his side, to learn from him how to shoulder the weight of life with ease. And so to step out of burnout society into a life of soul rest. Now, here's some of what I learnt from John Mark Comer's book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. If we want to live the life of Jesus, that life that is characterized by joy and peace and love, if we want to live the life of Jesus, then we need to take up the lifestyle of Jesus. The secret involves living as Jesus lived and adopting his lifestyle. To ask, what would Jesus do if he were me? Not that old famous question, what would Jesus do? But what would Jesus do if he were me? Because Jesus was a first century Jewish rabbi. He wasn't a 21st century grandfather or grandmother. He wasn't a, an immigrant looking for work. He wasn't a parent with many small children, what would Jesus do if he were me? You see, Jesus says he is the way and the truth and the life. And we often focus so much on Jesus as the truth that we don't live with Jesus as the way. And so in this sermon series, we're going to look at some of the practices that Jesus did in his life and we're going to have a go at putting them into practice in our own lives. Practice of 
Sabbath. I'm going to unfold that in another sermon. Just suffice to say that at the start of the pandemic, I saw a meme on um, social media that said, this is the first time in history that we can save the world and other people's lives by staying at home and doing nothing. We've got this, people. What if we could find rest for our souls by literally doing nothing, by ceasing our productivity? That's what Sabbath is about. Solitude and silence. When you look at the life of Jesus, you look at a life of prayer and relationship with his Father that was catalyzed and that was nourished by deliberately taking time away from the busyness of life. And Jesus was sometimes so busy that he couldn't even stop to eat. But he always took time to be with his Heavenly Father. He always took time for solitude and silence and prayer. Simplicity. Letting go of some of the things that tie us and bind us. Some of the addictions of modern life. Like constant being on our phone or always being on social media. I'm going to look at that one too. I want to finish this sermon in a way that's quite different from normal. And that is not by preaching at you, but by practicing something together. So some of you may have uh, seen or um, had a go at some of the breath prayers. Today I just want to finish off by spending some time with Jesus in prayer. Quiet, slow, contemplative prayer. Kids can do this. I've seen children here at the college do contemplation and really appreciate it from prep all the way up to year 12. So find a comfortable place to sit. Just become a little more aware of the breath that is moving in and out of your body. Let your body relax. If you like, you can close your eyes to help you to concentrate on the words that we're going to meditate on. And as we do this, I'm reminded of uh, something that my seminary lecturer said once. He said, when we meditate on scripture, when we engage our imagination to enter into the text, we're not imagining something that is not real. We are imagining something that is very real because Jesus said, I will be with you always. So you might like to close your eyes. Be still and aware of the presence of God within you through his Holy Spirit and all around you. I invite you to imagine the truth that Jesus is with you. Maybe sitting beside you, or maybe just in front of you. And now Jesus is speaking to you. He says, Come to me, you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me, you who 
are weary. And burdened. And I will give you rest. As you imagine Jesus sitting with you, receive those words. In your mind, you li might like to say something to Jesus. You might like to tell him what is wearying you at the moment. See what Jesus does as he listens to what you are saying. You might like to say, in your mind, Jesus, these are the things that burden me right now. might like to imagine yourself kind of physically handing your burdens over to Jesus. Remember that he is the one who bears the weight of the yoke with you. Jesus says, I will give you rest. I receive your burdens. I walk with you and lift your weariness. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Thank you, Jesus, for carrying our burdens, lifting our weariness, and inviting us to walk with you with your easy yoke. In your name we pray. Amen. I invite you to slowly come back to awareness of the space around you. And when you're ready, uh, open your eyes and slowly return to what is happening here. I invite you to uh, journey with me over the next few weeks with this sermon series, Find Rest for Your Souls. And you might know someone who might benefit from uh, learning and listening and uh, walking the way of Jesus in these ways. And I'd like to encourage you to invite someone to zoom in uh, to our worship if you think that will be of blessing to them.